Hey everybody, welcome back to Inside the Stash. Yes, once again, we have acquired more crap that I feel the need to show you. Uh, I know, we're way behind on everything right now. Uh, I'd apologize, except I'm just entirely too tired to care. Uh, the slowdown we were supposed to get at work it's in the spring, it's just, it has not slowed down, which looks great in my bank account. But uh, it's really just, uh, you know, it's Winamp on me. Anybody remembers Winamp, the uh, MP3 player? The little thing was always the, the still kicking the llama's ass. Yeah, work still kicking my ass. So we'll get caught up here eventually. But in the meantime, this stuff that I want to show you is still strewn all over my workbench. Uh, not that I have any place to put it away anyway, but I just need to get it off my workbench so that I can actually sit here and work on things besides uh, having these boxes uh, stacked all over the place. Uh, so we'll spin the camera around and uh, we'll show you some stuff here in a second. Uh, also, if you watch this video, it is approximately one week to NNL East. Uh, at the mo this moment in time, I do not think I'm going to have anything new finished for NNL East, uh, which is sort of a disappointment. kind of want to participate in the uh, little Honda parking lot thing that Diversified Scalers had going on, but it sort of is what it is. I have a few things that I'm still, you know, pushing on. I just don't know that if I can get them done in a week. The the time evaporated. I was so far ahead of schedule with stuff, and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, it's like, poof, shazam, it's a week to go. And, uh, you know, it's just one of the situations where the, you know, I have basically two and a half days a week off of work, and, uh, sorry, I sort of zoned out there for a second. I was looking behind me, and something that was uh, a pretty rare kit fell on the floor. I don't know how it got down there. I have to go pick that up. At any rate, uh, beside that point, um, the uh, yeah, so time time has evaporated basically, and so I don't know. I, I really can say probably for sure that I'm not going to get the NSX done. There's just so much stuff to do with it in terms of uh, the interior being multiple colors uh, and you know everything else. I have the chassis. Uh, pretty much almost done on the front half. Uh, the back half built separately when you build the engine, and they want you to sort of build the interior between the front and the back. Uh, I've started working on the engine anyway. And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll see what happens there. It's, it's just a lot more parts than it looked like <laughs> originally three months ago or two months ago when I started it. And so I'm sort of, like I said, poking and prodding around. I don't, I don't know that I can drag anything across the finish line, but I'm going to at least make a good heart and try at it. Um, but yeah, we'll be coming, we'll be going in and at least, uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, that was something I had mentioned doing, uh, in the past, actually, I know I mentioned doing it in the past, but, uh, you know, that's a for sure thing now, the hotel, uh, debited me this Wednesday, I guess it was, for the, for the, uh, two nights we're gonna stay out there, so the hotel's paid for now, uh, we're gonna go. Uh, I still have stuff to bring, the McLaren will make the trip, because it's never, of course, it's been, in, uh, displayed out there, and then I have two builds. Uh, there were 24-hour builds that will go on that uh, little display that uh, all of us that who do the 24-hour build uh, thing with uh, Gary Kolchak and the rest of the guys. Um, I have, like, uh, what, three years ago? Three or four years ago, I did, I did a Porsche 911 Carrera, and then uh, two years ago, I did the, uh, or last year, I should say, I did that BMW 318i uh, touring race car. A little gnat or something down here. Fantastic. So anyway, like I said, we'll flip the camera around and we'll be right back. So first up, we've got this box here. This box is from 8181. It uh, has some resin goodies in it. Um, a lot of this stuff is, is teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny stuff. So I can't really show it to you in a way that's going to make any sense to you. Uh, what this is, uh, is the resin, con two actually, really, resin trans kits that could be combined into one, should you wish to do so. Uh, there are a number of, like I said, <laughs> baggies of little parts. So it's kind of, obviously there's a couple steering wheels in there. This, I believe, is mostly parts for the, yeah, it's parts for everything. There's going to be a graphic on the screen here that's going to show you what all this is. Basically, what it, what it is, is a left-hand drive conversion uh, done up by the guys at Scratch Built Garage and 8181. To convert a Aoshima A96 or AE86 Truno to a left-hand drive US spec Toyota Corolla GTS, uh, 
the parts uh, that I was showing you there are a bunch of these little itty bitty bits here for the clutch fan, the left hand drive wiper reservoir, the left hand drive wiper motor, the left hand drive servo brake, the air scoop, the grill, the mass airflow sensor, uh, the grill badge plates, and things like that. Um, trying to figure out where. And then uh, as we come as we come back into reality here, they've got they include this set of decals. A couple of different, uh, couple of, of, of different things here. There we go. Goes into focus now. Uh, for the GTS Twin Cam 16 and some Toyota Corolla GTS uh, logos, things like that. So it's a little decal sheet. This uh, this baggie here has the left hand drive wipers in it. It has the uh, U.S. spec front and rear bumpers, and it has the uh, all important left hand drive dashboard. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Also, in here is the uh, deck conversion for uh, a three for the two door coupe, a spoiler for the two door coupe. Uh, and this clear piece here, there's a bunch of little pieces running around down here for turn signals and stuff for the US spec. And then the rear window for a coupe. And then the, the other part of this uh, conversion is a two-door Corolla conversion for the, uh, again, the Aoshima kit, as opposed to the Fujima one. Now I'm looking at it, this thing has a little bit of a twist to it. So, a little, little, little fixing to do, but all in all, it's a, it's a pretty good quality uh, resin part. There's no... Uh, no pinholes or bubbles in it or anything else like that. It's a, it's a fairly smooth uh, cast resin. If you really wanted to complain about anything, I don't think the top of the door, uh, where the door scribings are, are quite equidistant from one another in the sense of not quite being even on both sides. But overall, it's a, I think it's a pretty decent uh, body. I haven't got a true no chassis out to see if it fits or not. Uh, like I said, there's now that, now that I'm looking at it, it's got a little bit of a little bit of a I'll warp this sort of this way, um, you know, fiddling around with it, I'd be able to get it out. Now these are sold separately in the sense that uh, the body is one thing, and then all of those other pieces are another. Now you could, in you know, in effect, take the thing and combine it and make a left-hand drive uh, three-door Corolla, or you can take the parts and make a three-door Corolla in a Japanese two-door. So that's sort of up to you. They're sold separately. Uh, you don't have to buy. The, you don't get everything all at once. I mean, you could obviously. I got everything all at once, but they're not sold that way. Um, yeah, so it's, it ends up being up to you as to what you get with that. And then on the kit side of things, we got a bunch of stuff uh, from the good old bin over at uh, over at Yahoo Auctions. First up, we've got this uh, Subaru Legacy. Uh, Tommy Kara version. It's just a uh, legacy B4. I'm sorry, guys, if I sound like disoriented, but to me, this looks like it's kind of quasi out of focus, and I don't know exactly why the camera isn't auto focusing the right way today. But anyway, there we go. Um, the front bumper on this is resin, and then the rear wing and the roof and the struts to hold the rear wing up are actually white and metal. I'm pretty sure, given the weight of the rear spoiler, the uh, the, the thing's gonna like nose stand or a tail stand like this, and you put it together. Uh, these kits that have third-hand resin, so to speak, or really third-party resin uh, conversions to them are notoriously bad fitting. I took the bumper out and I I tried to fit it to this, and it looks to me like the uh, mounting pin, because it's designed to fit into the actual body itself. Uh, is like about a millimeter off, too far, too uh, far away, um, and so my guess is that if you cut the the pins off, it'll fit just fine. But I have a bunch of other Tom McCarra stuff, and this showed up just sort of out of the blue, uh, and I was like, oh hey, grab that because it was cheap. So uh, kind of cool. It's got your requisite little uh, Tom McCarra logos there, so that'll be uh, something. So that's something for the, the future, future stack. 
I got picked up another one of these uh, fake VIP cars. This one is, a, again, another Fujimi kit. This is the Toyota Crown 3.0 Royal Saloon, so this is a Crown Royal. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a 9th uh, Gen uh, Crown. This is sort of the vehicle that came before all of the Aoshima kits. Aoshima, we've talked about before, uh, starting with the 2003 model year, but I think the actual kits came out in 2005. Uh, started making Crown Royals and Crown Athletes every time the car changed a little bit. Um, this represents the car that Kate would have been the generation beforehand. Now, this is sort of the same way that Crown Majesta we bought. The other, the uh, last video uh, is there's a set of like gold foil in here to make all of the fender lips. Uh, it comes with these fake uh, J wing wheels because they're not really a real wheel. Uh, I don't believe the the uh, grill is actually molded in gold. I don't think it is anyway. I didn't really look dig that far into it. I don't think the, there's any chrome parts in here at all, actually. But the reason why uh, I snagged this is because much like the uh, Crown Majesta, this does come with the regular factory stock Crown wheels, so you don't have to use the uh, fake fork, the uh, fake little J wing wheels. All right, so I'm going to take a peek through here real quick. I, I'm, I don't see a chrome tree for that grill. Oh, well, the grill's molded in. Duh, that's why. I'm looking for something that doesn't exist. I'm used to uh, Aoshima stuff where they, that grill, the grill and the bumpers on the Aoshima crowns are separate. But at any rate, so that's molded in there. So, you know, it would be ridiculous to try to get this, uh, this sheet of gold bar metal foil to go over the grill. Uh, they do give you, if you if you were interested in it, they do give you templates to, you know, cut for <laughs> the, uh, the, the little lip fenders there. And this kit was, is cool, again, because it comes with another uh, one of these little 1990s Fujimi catalogs of, of kits. So, always fun to sort of uh, delve into the past, as it were, to uh, see what's going on there. And uh, decals look pretty good in this, in terms of... Uh, you know, the, of what decals are, basically a gauge cluster and some crown uh, crown logos and whatnot. So that's cool. Happy to have that. And then I picked this up, which is one of those kits that's like, whoa, wow, you found one of those. Oh, my goodness. And I really don't care because I just want to build the car the, 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 without the police car tie-in. Yeah, so this is a Wangen police station kit. Uh... I don't know necessarily if this is a Wang and Midnight type of deal, because I'm not into the anime enough, because Fujimi did all those uh, kits for that series, if this is a police car from that series or not. Like I said, I don't intend to build this as a police car. I tend to build this as the S130 Crown Royal Saloon V8 that you uh, see here. The reason why I bought the police car was, uh, at the time, and it ended up being one listed shortly after I purchased the, the uh, police version, there were none of the just factory stock versions. Uh... Most people recognize this kit because the last time that Aoshima issued it, it came with a set of Vortex uh, that were like multi-piece photo etch wire wheels. Um, this is, kit's kind of cool in the sense that it comes with a... Uh, let's see if I find it here. It's, it's floating around on the parts here, but it's like a coaster size Wang and Midnight little... Uh, I don't know if that's really a sticker. or it's, Yeah, I guess it is a sticker. I'm trying to see if I can see where you peel it apart, but... Uh, you know, that, so that's kind of fun. This is the old motorized chassis uh, kit in the sense that it's, you know, got one of those tongue depressor style connections for the front tie rod. And, and, you know, you have to beat rivets into the front end. You also get this little policeman figure. I'm not sure if that's, uh, I'm guessing that's probably not resin. It's a little warp, whatever it is. But, uh, again, don't care, not using it. And then you have your, uh, your body, which, like, on this body, you see the grill is separate. <laughs> That's what I was looking for in the other one. But yeah, that with with the Fujimi kit and this, other than unless somebody makes an S170, which is the ninth generation uh, uh, crown, which I don't think anybody did. I can't find any listings of one anyway. This completes my crown uh, collection. Now, there are some 132nd scale, like, Toyo Pet crowns, the first gen, second gens. Unfortunately, they're 132nd scale, and uh, 
I'm just going to hope for the best. And at some point in the future, somebody will decide to uh, redo those uh, old LS kits. Uh, I think Microwave sells them now in regular 1.4 scale at some point. You know, there's, there are, uh, you know, comings and goings of, of uh, the whole historic Japanese police car. Or Japanese police car. Historic Japanese car thing. You saw it with the Toyota AA and all the other stuff that's going on. But I guess technically that doesn't finish my crown collection. This does. Uh, this is one of these uh, little uh, paid to be in the right place at the right time situations. This is the high mecha version of the uh, S120, which is, I believe, let's see, would be the seventh generation uh, crown. So you get the full SMGU engine. Uh, you could put a transmission on it, and it comes with a stand if you want to just build the engine separately, or it goes in the chassis. Uh, there is the sort of other chassis that comes with these. If you if you go dig around, you can find plenty of Toyota Crown 3000 uh, kits. They were released not that long ago without the engine, and they have that really crappy, cruddy, Fujimi motorized chassis underneath of it. Uh, this does not. It has the same chassis, uh, or the same design of chassis, because I don't think it's technically the exact same chassis, but the design of the chassis that came in those GX71 triplets when they did the uh, Cresta and the Chaser and the, and the uh, Mark II with the high mecha reissues a couple years ago. Um, so this, like I said, exceptionally cool. These tend to go for, even in Japan, 50 bucks or so. However, 1999 Hobby Search, one day, last week, just listed it. Limit one per customer, $16, which is what this kit sells for, you know, normally. Which is what I really like. If Hobby Search somehow finds stuff, and I don't think this is from a collection. This is brand new. This was last reissued in 2010. Uh, they, they, if they find some stuff, I swear to God, they have like a furnace and an eye wash station and stuff that they just lose random half cases of materials behind. And then they're like, hey, Bob, go clean up the warehouse. And Bob finds all this stuff that there's only two or three of. And that would be the case. Because I bought one, there was still some left. There's still at least one left. And then they're sold out. And then they got relisted Friday. And then they're sold out again. And then somebody on Creativity, which is a Facebook group, posted a link to Fujimi's actual co uh, commerce website where you can buy stuff from Fujimi if you live in Japan. And they have it listed as purchasable. You can buy up to like 13 of them, uh, which apparently is the max order you can put into Fujimi at one time as a, per as a uh, you know, like a, a, a citizen, so to speak, not a vendor. Uh, so, I don't know if Fujimi has a whole bunch of these, and Hobby Search found out and ordered a case, maybe? I don't know what the deal is, how they got a hold of them. All I know is I paid $16 for a $50 model kit. Um, <laughs> and it really isn't even worth a $50. isn't really worth the $50. It's because it has the engine in it, and of course the engine is uh, fodder for everybody who wants to engine swap it into something else. We, of course, will not be swapping it into anything. We will be building it as the... Uh, as the kit it is. It's got some nice wheels uh, in it as well. They're not necessarily factory stock wheels, but I believe they're factory stock from this particular car. And then uh, this will be, of course, your engine tree. So uh, very, very excited because, like I said, all in all, this does take care of my uh, crown collection. You've got like a little... Uh, let me see here. Got a little insert here for the for you have to cut the hood off, obviously, and then you have the insert for like the top half of the engine bay, and then you get this uh, chassis instead that has the ability to put the engine in it. Uh, it does have you know some of the stuff molded in. Part of the transaxle is molded in, but it's nowhere near as bad as the <coughs> excuse me as the kit is. And one of the things about the high mecha kits is GS seventy one. Uh, triplets are this way too. The wheels, instead of molding with, po with polycaps, mount like a real set of wheels. If this will go into focus or not, uh, I just got too much stuff going on behind it. But you see here, you've got like wheel hubs with wheel studs, and those will actually go through these wheels. These wheels are drilled out with wheels uh, for, no, well, not lug nuts, obviously, because they don't have lug nuts, but they're drilled out to. Uh, to accept those, so it's a very, very unique mounting system that only exists in their high mecha kits. And I don't, I don't have any of the other, like the Salica or the Supra. Um, I'm assuming the Soar are sort of the same thing, but it's kind of cool. And then uh, 
the jealousy may start at this point. Uh, I've managed. To, I've always wanted some of these kits, and uh, I, I just got in a position where I could afford the asking prices. Now I didn't pay very much for these. That's the great part of uh, buying stuff out of Japan secondhand. All right. So first up, you got your uh, Tamiya Castrol Nissan Primera uh, Japanese Touring Car Championship, the Castrol car. Now. All of the, there's three kits here that are going to wrap this video up, and all of them have the same issue, which is that they're old and their decals are uh, shot, more or less. What I'm trying to do, what I'm hoping to do with these kits, is that they come with a, uh, a sort of two sets of decals. And anybody who builds a lot of Japanese, or any, builds a lot of Tamiya race car kits knows how this works. And this one's sort of stuck behind this, uh, the, we'll look at the interior pieces, but there's this decal sheet that's right here that has the carbon fiber pattern for the seat. Come on. Too much, too much shiny. But it's got the carbon fiber pattern for the seat. It's got the gauge cluster and stuff like that. If I can save this little sheet that has the interior pieces in it, then I'm, I'll be thrilled. Uh, this sheet for the Castrol logos doesn't look too bad, but obviously all the white Castrol stuff is... Uh, you know, pretty well toast. It's all yellowed and everything else like that. But the kit itself is in uh, superb shape. Obviously, it's still all bag. Um, and uh, really, if if it wasn't for this little mold swirl, which I don't know if how well it's going to show up on the camera, it sort of goes linearly across the roof right about here. If it wasn't for that mold swirl, you could probably uh, just clear coat the plastic and uh, roll with it from there um, because this you know it's it's really for for being molded in metallic green and the problems that metallics tend to have when you mold them in color uh, you know this like I said has that one this one little flow mark right there otherwise you'd be able to get away with uh, with, with just rolling with it now what we're gonna do with this because like I said the Castrol logos and stuff like that are toast is uh, Frankie over SK has the uh, replacement set for the Gia race of Macau that uh, Mr. Hasami also drove this same car, basically. Just some slightly different associate sponsorships and stuff like that. And so we're going to go with that replacement set of decals for this. If you're buying one primary, you might as well buy them both, right? Am I, am I right? Am I right? So here's your Calsonic version. Uh, this has the same sort of issue. Uh, the, the decals in it are, you know, in halfway decent shape again. I mean, it's just these things are so old. I'm trying to think of when this was, when this, when these kits came out. Let's see if I find a copyright real quick. 1995. So these kits are as old as my high school diploma is. And, uh, you know, same sort of deal here where the interior, you know, decals and stuff like that don't look too terribly, terribly bad. But when you get to the Calsonic logos, everything is yellowed again. Uh... Now, I've seen various, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, I'm crutching on the word, you know, various uh, tips on how to get the, because they're saying that the, the decals aren't yellow, the glue is. And uh, I've seen some tips, I'm trying not to cough, about how to, uh, you know, get the sort of ooze, the you know, put get the decal off the sheet and then sort of push out the glue. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if all comes to worse, that's an option. But again, uh, Frankie has uh, replacement Calsonic, straight Calsonic JTCC decals, and so just gonna buy the. We are actually they're already on the way, but you know, just gonna buy replacement decals. And then last but not least, before we leave you, uh, one more giant box that doesn't fit into the screen. How about that? You have to tip the camera up. There we go. Your uh, Tommy of Volvo 850 Saloon British Touring Car Championship. <coughs> I don't understand why Tommy never did a factory stock version of this car. They did a factory stock version of the wagon that obviously also became a, a BTCC car uh, over time. Um, this is, you know, only came as a race car kit. If you're looking for a street version of this, you're going to look forever and never find it because it doesn't exist. Uh, these were kind of cool cars just in what they were. Uh, TWR, who did a lot of race prepping for Jaguar. Uh, or Jaguar, uh, race prep these, and uh, they ran the wagon, 
the one year, and then they came back and ran the car the next year uh, due to changes in the regulations. The wagon won everything it got entered into, and so they changed the regulations, and they came back with the car, and they were like, ha-ha, screw you, we won anyway. Uh, you know, the, the the body itself is not really that far off from a factory stock body. I've seen a bunch of people, you know, convert these over into sedans or, or a street, you know, version of the sedan, so to speak. Pretty much really only the front air dam with its, uh, you know, brake duct cooling uh, situation here is really the only part of this that, uh, you know, isn't prototypically factory stock. Obviously, after that, then you're in, you know, racing interior mode where there's... Uh, uh, not really a whole heck of a lot going on I'm trying to dig the decals off the bottom. Here. So here's your decal sheet. Uh, it's pretty, you know, formidable in the sense of uh, covering a lot of what goes on with the car. You basically only really have to paint this white and a couple of the, in one other color. I think you have to paint the like the back half of the car uh, has to be painted uh, a dark blue, I believe. I'm trying to find it here. You have to paint like the middle of the car. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I can't find it now. Tommy always has a you know a, a legend on the car, even when you have to paint a two tone, and it's just showing me glue. Put these decals on before you put the door handles on. So maybe you don't have to put two tone on it at all. But at any rate, uh, you know they they again have the same issue where the H fifties are in the Auto Trader squares ring, getting a little yellow. So my goal here again is you know the. The, this gauge cluster and stuff that's in the middle here, maybe, maybe, eh, eh. It doesn't want to focus. I don't know why. This camera has been so difficult today. But at any rate, there's a gauge cluster here in the middle where these seatbelts are and stuff. If I can just save that stuff, I'll be happy with it. Because uh, there are, of course, replacement decals available. So, I am not sweating the uh, small details because it'll be quite easily taken care of. And this also, this came out in 96, so uh, it's also, you know, from that era of um, mid-1990s Tamiya decals, which may or may not actually function as decals, no matter when you bought the kit. Uh, so guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we're going to try to get back to doing some stuff here, now that the bench is cleared of uh, detritus for uh, future builds, and uh, catch you up on the uh, actual news programming as it were uh coming up on the friday show when it gets posted uh we will cover the the third quarter revel flyer we'll also be doing a special edition show that will cover the uh, shizuka hobby show news because all of those uh kit announcements have been made uh, anybody who is looking forward to anything from tamia i am sorry to report there will be no uh new tamia kits as far as automotive kits uh, they sunk all of their tooling dollars into the one six scale uh, Honda Africa Twin uh, dirt bike that they're doing. That was announced at Nuremberg Toy Fair, so it's not really a new kit, but it is the only the, you know they have the the whole thing you know built up and on display now. <coughs> <coughs> I try not to cough. Dang it! <coughs> uh, some cool stuff from Hasegawa, some cool stuff from Aoshima. So tune in for that when we get posted. And until then, we'll see you guys on the other side.